I should sleep. I don't want to sleep anymore. Somehow I'm sleeping enough for two people now. Is this what dying looks like? If I had the grace, I dream I could. I would lie in my bed, greet loving guests with words of wisdom, and then and then release this tenacity. But instead, I'm begging you to wake me from this half sleep, from this mirror of a world. I approach you, I'm frightened. You're giving me my medication and I'll take it from you. Though you'd better believe that I'd shout at anyone else who tried to give me it. Pink salt, morphine sulfate, High carb, low carb, antibiotic, ketogenic, pressured oxygen, anything they fucking want. And they're always telling me underneath it, you're just not trying hard enough. I am trying hard enough. I'm clinging on to this. I'm fighting more than they can make me want to with their judging. Judging? As if they know how it feels to have your best reason ripped away. And half myself went with it, leaving these fragments of bone and muscle and... Stop. I contain hurricanes, and if they're going to unmake me, then you'd better believe I will welcome these winds. Our bodies weren't made to hold forces like these. Don't you see? I grew into myself the way of a crucible of gold under smoldering charcoal. And as the extraneous burns away, I remain. Well, I hope you've both had a excellent lunch break and welcome back, albeit virtually. The next case for today is Mr. Hale, James, 30, is wheelchair bound, ventilation at night, complex catheter, stoma, feeding pump care, seven daily injections, medical unsta medically unstable with regular interventions required, history of serious pressure sores, recently discharged from hospital following admission for malnutrition and pressure sores on a 24-hour care package, which is now under review, to see if it can be reduced to the care package he was receiving prior to admission. Well, I didn't expect that back. So you need to make sure you wear the ventilator every night and if you're struggling during the day. Right. Ventilator at night or if I'm struggling. Uh, and remember the early symptoms of hypercapnia, the morning headaches or the breathlessness of the chest infection. So if I get short of breath or have a bad morning headache, 
I just need to call. Right? And do you remember which injection was with? Um, the bigger one, that's three times a day, and that's a bit more painful. Yeah, I recall. And the other one? That's every three hours during the day, but it shouldn't hurt as much. Every three hours. Right. And you know about the true cure and test it. Yeah, I just need to be slow and careful with beds and the feeding tube. And don't forget to squirt this in your bladder every day, that's the biocidal one. How could I forget? I think I've got it. It's strange, startling, stunning to realise that the difference between life and death is what? A machine that breathes for me, two injections, a hole in my intestines, and a solution to wash my bladder. Sober, if it wasn't for modern medicine, I wouldn't be. Anyway, now I just have to grip my teeth and get through this. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Hale has asked for the package to be continued. What wonderful news! Must have taken a lot of bravery. But we have to make our decisions independently. Brave. What complete and utter fuckers. Amazing. The magic of medicine. After years of playing cards against the gods each time I got sicker, waiting for my number to come up, not knowing what was left, and then, and then I stopped and I was like Icarus, given another opportunity to find his wings, like a modern knight in leather armor, black shirt, as if were my wings to melt, this, this armor would protect me. Maybe. I am doing well. Maybe my body is still alive. After endless times, I expected it to have stopped, given up on me. Maybe I can learn to be vulnerable, to let go of this bravery. I spent so long having to be brave. It was overrated by people who don't know what it takes to survive. Who don't want to learn what it is to be balanced on the edge of a scalpel and would rather watch me try to bear their expectation to be graceful. I bore it with the grace I have grown to love. Mine, more tenacious in its fury than they would wish, far less polished. But I expected dying to be my forte not this survival. I'm going to need help. So we are here to discuss uh, how best to help Miss, Mr. Hale lead an independent life within the financial constraints we are working inside. As you are aware, we have faced a significant budget cuts over the past 12 months. 
Um, she has requested that we continue her current 24-hour funded care package, but we find ourselves under no obligation to do so. If we can meet um, his needs effectively with an alternative provision? Uh, their need. Does this really matter? Before we begin, he has provided us with an outline of his current position. They have provided us. <sighs> really? Which we ought to hear in our considerations of his medical evidence and the broader situation we are presented with. Every day, my carers take my body. They hold it. They're holding me, my increasingly motionless self. Is that not enough for them? I learn to live like this. I turn grief into motion. And I built myself a life. Thanks to my carers. Wiping my ass without scrubbing away my dignity. Dressing, undressing, lifting, turning. So now, I will assert my place. Because they don't get to make my body into my definition. Thank you, Mr. Hale. We appreciate that it was not ideal that you couldn't join us in person, but... Then, the email came and told me that the wheelchair lift was broken. So, I would have to submit my evidence by video. As if they couldn't just wait for it to be repaired. As if this wasn't the entire bloody world, all the bloody time. You know what, darlings, if I were in charge, the wheelchair lifts would be prominent. We would advertise them, signpost them, talk about them everywhere. We would take their historic buildings and build ramps to the entrance and paint them gold and sparkly and dare them. Just dare them to take them away. Oh, fuck those excuses. I've heard them a thousand times from people who don't bother to mention that they're upstairs or the lift is broken, and sorry, there were no alternative venues. And if I get pissed off at them, it's always my fucking fault when it's their lift that's broken. No, I've heard enough sorries and nothing's changed. These laws don't give me equality.